lovely people. Today we're going to be doing another art lesson with Faith and Family Homeschoolers. Today's lesson is going to be lessons 30 and 31 in the art pad, which is painting the Blue Ridge Mountains. The materials I'm using in this video are probably going to be a little bit different than the one you guys will be using if you're using the Crayola paints. But basically I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm just going to try and mix up a bunch of different colors of paint. So the techniques you use might be a little bit different when you're mixing your paints, but the rest of the project will operate the same. You can see with these different types of paints that I'm using that I just have the color already in the tube and I just get a little bit of that out into the paint well and then I add more water and mix it all up. So it's just going to be a little bit different than what you guys are using. Before you guys start mixing up your colors, there is a step that we have to do first, and that is just to create a wash over the entire paper. So you'll see me in a second here grab my clean brush, and then I'm just going to take some plain water and just brush that all over my paper. This step will probably go a little faster if you have a bigger brush. The one I had to work with was pretty small, so it did take me quite a while, but if you do have a bigger brush, it'll speed up this step. As I'm doing this wash, I'm trying to spread out that water as evenly as possible. I'm trying to keep it decently light, but not too light that it'll dry right away. I just don't want any water pooling up on my paper because that might cause it to wrinkle or start to roll up in places. So I'm just trying to keep a pretty medium layer of water on the paper. My next step is just going to be to mix up some light blue, which I already have done here. But when you mix up this color, you want it to be pretty light because we're gonna get darker as it goes down. And you're just going to take this light blue and cover the entire paper just like you did with the wash. If you're starting to see some dry spots on your paper, you can always take more water from your clean brush and just brush that right on to where you're going to put your paint. The art pad might indicate that you need quite a bit of wait time in between these coats, but depending on how heavy you put your paint down, it might dry pretty quickly. So just judge that for yourself before you start any new layers. The next thing I'm going to do is drop in some little subsections with my pencil, and I'm going to make these lines more curvy at the bottom, and then as I get to the top, they're going to get closer together and a little bit more jagged. This will make it look like you have some foothills down lower that gradually incline up into the mountains. When you're doing this step two, it might be a little more helpful to use a standard number two pencil rather than a mechanical pencil. I just noticed that since my lead was so thin on my mechanical pencil, it was hard for me to make darker lines. And as I went on painting, the more layers I put on, the harder it got to see those pencil marks. So I would just recommend using a number two pencil and making your lines decently dark for this step. Now I'm mixing up some paint that is just slightly darker than the paint that I just put down for the background. And for this layer, I'm going to start where my top line is and I'm just going to follow that outline that I made. And then from there, I'm going to cover the rest of the paper on down from that line with that same color. At this point in the project, we're going to start repeating a lot of the steps. So for my next layer, once I finish coloring in all of this layer, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing where I mix up a new color. The next color is going to be a little more green than this one. And then I'm going to outline starting at the next line down I made with my pencil mark. And then I'm just going to color the rest of the paper in from that point on down. Since I want my next color to be a blue-green, I'm going to take that same blue paint I was just using and add just a little bit of yellow to it. If I add green, it's not going to make as much of an impact, but if I add the yellow, it'll make it change color a little more quickly. And I don't want it to be completely blue-green yet, I just want it to be slightly more green than it is blue, if that kind of makes sense because my colors are going to fade very gradually and I don't want those differences between each layer to be too pronounced. Mm -hmm. 
Once I've given that layer plenty of time to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my next color. This one, I'm going to make it more green than it was before. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow and then that color should show up just a little bit different than the layer below it. Also, as you're mixing your colors, don't be afraid to mix up a lot of it. Watercolor is something that can run out very quickly, much more quickly than acrylic or oil paint would. So you wanna make sure you have plenty of this in your paint wells so you don't get to the bottom of it before you're finished with it. Using the same process I've been doing, I'm just gonna mix up more paint. This time it's going to be much more blue-green than the one above it is. And I'm just gonna do exactly what I did where I meet my outline and I fill it in all the way down. As I start these last few layers, I wanna make sure my color is more green than it is blue. So I wanna keep that in mind while I'm mixing my paints up and it might be better to start with a green base and add some blue instead of the other way around. My bottom layer is going to be black with no blue or green in it. This is because I want it to have more of a silhouette look. So this is where I'm going to put whatever foreground image I want. This is an optional step right here, but if you want to have a grassy texture on your last hill, you just need to make some short little brush strokes from the color up into the hill above it. That way it'll give you some nice short little pieces of grass instead of really long ones that'll make your hill look bigger than it needs to be. This is the very last step here and we're going to be able to get a little bit more creative. So the last thing to do is add in your foreground image. So you're just going to create a little hilltop scene and that can look however you want. I'm gonna put in a little house and a tree along with some other details, but feel free to use your imagination and get as creative as you'd like. Once you're finished with your foreground image, you're all done with the project. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it.